Hey, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing what's in my studio. And here we are, we're at home in the studio. I only get a week, a month here, um, but I've got it set up pretty good. It's basically a shed and uh, we're gonna talk about what's in it, what gear we've got, the new gear, the old gear that's gone, and uh, a little bit more how we do what we do. Righto, uh, let's hit that intro and have a chat. to have you back um yeah in the studio so i guess this is the studio a little corner of my shed where i keep all my stuff and storage and everything and it's my little home away from home softbox light up here doing the light stuff uh obviously it's tricky with the light being a shed to try and kick in especially in the daytime it's not a fully sealed off area so i do the best i can i've got blackout curtains over there which i can do and i sort of keep that coming through for a little bit of I guess backlight, I guess you can call it. Gear wise, this is my old toolbox that I started my apprenticeship with. I was gonna buy a desk, but I bought a desktop and just mounted it onto the top of my old toolbox. And it looks a million bucks. I'm really happy with this. Gives me a little bit more space. It's neater, it's tiny, it's better for photo shoots. Uh, and only costs like 60 bucks to deliver it on eBay. So you can't knock that. So sometimes you don't need new gear. You can make do with what you got. My um, toolbox I now use for all my camera gear. It's got all the drawers and sliding stuff. I've got stuff in there. I've got stuff in my cupboards as well. But it's on wheels, so I can move it, so I can adjust the studio to suit if I need to do something different. Uh, very versatile, I guess is probably what I'm trying to say. Obviously, the MacBook Pro 16 inch is the backbone of the channel. You can't run a channel without a decent computer. On. I, trust me, I did. I had a, MacBook 13 inch Pro 2014 that I run on for the first three years of the channel and it just about killed me. I'm talking 20, 20 hour uh, render times, it was just mental. And if you did anything in 4K, it was just gonna just, yeah, bye bye, good night. You'd be uploading overnight uh, or rendering overnight just so you can then go to upload it. It was just a nightmare. I went to the 16 inch. This is the last version with the Intel. Obviously it's sort of pretty much obsolete now because their new M1s and M2s are 10 times better. But it's a fantastic computer. It's got so much grunt. It does 4K. Uh, it struggles a little bit with the DJI uh, Mini 3 footage. Um, but it uh, still I can still get through it. I just take it at a quarter resolution and I can go through and I can slide and play with it. So it still offers great value and it's 16 inch because uh, I'm always traveling to and from work, having that big screen makes a big difference. So that's really, really cool. Logitech MX Master Mouse. I normally do use a mouse pad, but the best thing about this is, A, it's super comfortable, but because of the laser or whatever it uses, you can pretty much go on any surface, including glass, and it'll pick up and run it. It is an amazing mouse. Powering that, I've got, as you know, I run Zendure products through all my stuff. I've got the 100 watt, PD charger here for the laptop. I've got the new SuperGo Mini here as well. Another uh, Zendure run, just running that. And then I also have my big uh, one that I use for when I'm traveling that'll run this on the plane. So I definitely use a lot of power banks. Um, as we all know, in cameras and drones are all about batteries. Having Zendure, uh, not affiliated with, I'd love to be, but um, they have sent me one product, which was the travel adapter, the new one, and that was fantastic. Um, and I've had no drums with any stuff, so I'm happy to keep buying their gear and it uh, fits to purpose and it's very, very cool. We do have the Apple iPhone. That's sort of, everyone's got a phone. That's nothing new and exciting. Um, I run, this is the iPhone 12 Pro. I'm going up to the 14 Pro Max, a bigger screen. So when I'm traveling, I can watch the videos and that's really the only reason for that. Um, plus it's just a little, I'm happy that I'm not working with it all the time now, so I don't need it in the pocket. I can try carry it most of the time it's sitting on the desk at work. So I'm happy to have a bigger size to get that screen space for when I'm traveling to watch a video. So I don't have to have an iPad or anything with me as well. So that reduces what I'm going to carry and I carry a lot. <laughs> so that's there. That's good. That's 5G. So that'll 
when I hit 5G, I can upload and do everything. And I do shoot video on that. It is not the best. So I'm really hoping the 14 does improve the video a little bit for the channel so I can use that when I'm doing stuff on the R6, which is what we're shooting on, R6. We've got, uh, we use Rode Mic, I've got the Rode Video Micro 2 on that we're recording the sound on. Um, I've also got three-legged thing tripods. As you know, I've had, I mentioned them all the time. They're fantastic. I've got Winston and I also have another one here, Albert. The old Albert, still here. Uh, great tripods, heavy, but rock solid. When you're doing landscapes with waterfalls and wind and rain and all that sort of stuff, you, I guess I do have a lightweight one which I carry at work um, and you do feel the difference in it, but these are built to last. This will last as long as I'm alive and probably into Jack's career, I guess, once he gets into that. And I've had no dramas with them. I use a L plate from them as well, which has got the PD clip on it, so I can put it straight on my Peak Design clip and carry the camera. So gear-wise, camera-wise, you can't beat it. They are brilliant tripods and I definitely can recommend them. Let's talk a little bit more about what we've got here and on the shelf. So behind us is new shelving system. Obviously, the bag, very important for any camera person. Um, I did have a newer bag that I started the channel with and worked really well. I upgraded to this, the Shimoda Explorer 35 liter. Probably need a little bit bigger version now, I think. Um, I'm thinking about getting an X50. Hopefully they bring out an Explorer in a bigger version in the 50 because I do like the form factor of this. Super comfortable. All the pockets, great for weather. It's over a year old and it's done a heap of stuff and it's still in really good nick. A few little bits of scratches and stuff. But other than that, uh, fantastic. Can't recommend it enough. And I match it with the PD clip from Peak Design. This is brilliant and you definitely need one of these uh, when you're out taking photos. You don't want to have to go in and out to get your camera. Having that on there when you're doing hiking, and photography, landscape stuff is brilliant. It's easy just to pop it off and get a photo when you see something. And if you really need to set up with it, you can stop and take it all off and go. But this is brilliant and definitely recommend it. Bag-wise, uh, it is fantastic. It's holding up good. I'm impressed. Again, even though it's a 35 litre, it's great for travel. And that's why I was happy to go to the 35 litre because it fits on the plane. I have no dramas with the plane. I haven't been pulled up at any stage by any airlines. It's not too big that it looks out of place. It looks heavy, but when it's chockers, it carries a ton of stuff and it still fits under the seats and in the overhead lockers. So it's definitely a go. Happy with that one. Lens wise, well, I've trimmed it, trimmed down the lenses a fair bit. I have the new 24, uh, RF 24 to 105 L series lens that's on there. Love it. Uh, F4, everything I've seen out of it so far, including the star trials, will be pretty darn spiffy. So that's gonna be my main video lens now. I did have the 16 to 35. I'm keeping that because it's a 2.8 uh, for astro stuff and low light stuff. It's a probably a little bit better handling for video than the F4 version. Down the road, if I ever win Test Lotto, I'll be able to buy the 15 to 35 and then I'll have a 2.8 and I can uh, retire this little lady. But this is, a, this is the first series and it's still a brilliant lens. RF 100 to 400 lens, look, I've seen a lot of things how it's not super sharp and it's, it's it's not it's not the best lens in the world but I've the more I'm doing it and I think the longer the length you go out on it the better the depth of field on it and I've done a lot of just walking around taking some uh, flower shots and stuff with the changing of the season at work and this has worked a treat it's been really really nice um, actually it's so much lighter than uh, L series it's ridiculous it's at least half the weight of this 16-35 and I've had no dramas with it and I think it's actually a really good lens to, for what I use the telephoto because I do a lot of stacking on uh, panoramas as you've seen on the channel that's a really good lens and cost effective wise the value for money is pretty darn special now two other lenses which I've seen now I've got this vintage mint condition 300mm FD uh, 5.6 lens which I love um, if you haven't seen the video on that, uh, is it worthwhile having one of these on the digital camera? And this is an FD lens, that's so a good 30, 40 years old. 
Um, absolute mint condition, fantastic lens, and the photos coming out of it were pretty darn special. On the R6, love it. It's got the, I've run the adapter on it, and I have had no dramas. If you want to, can't afford the bigger lenses, and you've just you've just got yourself a nice body, like an R6 or an R5 or even an R camera, uh, even the RP. Like even when I had the RP, a, a vintage lens on there can give it that little bit of I don't know, a little bit of something you're looking for. So definitely don't discard looking at lenses. The glass makes the picture. I think it's, it's a big difference. The quality of glass. You can go up to an RF from a uh, from a standard lens it's a massive difference but some of these old lenses have just got that little bit of style about them the glass a little bit different but the bokker and everything in about them can still be exceptional and saying that there's one lens that I will never get rid of which is my just absolute gem Pentax this is the 50mm f1.4 uh, I've had this for a few years now absolutely my favorite lens 51.4, it's the eight blade, very rare version. It is mint condition and just gorgeous and I love it. Uh, if I want to get in close and I want to do something that's got a little bit of feel and really blow out that background with some amazing uh, depth and, and 3D pop, uh, that lens is sensational. So that's pretty much my, I've got five lenses now. I've just sold a couple and I'm selling the old um, standard RF 24 to 105 on eBay. Uh, to, because I've obviously got this one, so I'm selling that and these are the lenses I'll sort of keep and hopefully I'm going to get another R series body, that's my next program. The other big key feature in the arsenal is the Mini 3 Pro, absolute gem of a drone. The Mini 2 uh, was fantastic 4K footage, I got some amazing photos and footage of that, I loved it, it was awesome in high wind. Everything that could do got upgraded with this change. You've got the screen now on the RC controller, which is just absolutely bloody brilliant. It's so much better than having to use the iPhone uh, to look at your shots in a frame up. It's plenty bright enough, uh, and I've had no dramas. The battery lasts forever. This thing with a ver vertical video, which I've now able to use and, and get those three vertical shots you've seen in a couple of videos, I think that's sensational. The quality of the footage comes out with that 10-bit color is fantastic. The photos are fantastic. Everything about it is really, really good. Again, super compact. Love it. Very, very impressed. DJI's knocked it out of the park yet again for that. The batteries going up to 45 minutes for those bigger batteries are super handy. When I'm so, now I'm somewhere safe and out of the way, I can use them and be pretty confident that I'm gonna get plenty of footage to get a video out. So, and that's the main thing, being able to not have to rush through something, to sit there, take your time, get the shot that you're thinking about in your head and you've got 45 minutes to do it. That's a huge amount of time when you're flying a drone. So that's pretty darn cool. So if you're looking for a drone for photography or video for, and you're hiking and doing stuff, be great to have the Mavic 3 if you've got six, seven grand, but you've got to carry it as well, and that's a nightmare, as all hikers and photographers know about. So this is as good as option you're gonna get as the next step. Filter-wise, um, I started off with sort of different pieces. I'm sort of, I've gone Nissi, I've been Nissi for a while. I do like their filters, they do a great job for their filters. I'd love to, I really want to try out their new, it's like a tapered fit, it's not a magnetic. I want to try those and see if, it, if I can change it, the whole system up to them. Screwing on filters is can be painful. If you're above a waterfall and you want to change filter over to an MD1000, I had it actually uh, the other day when I was shooting a video on uh, image flat rocks. Tripods hanging out, the Winston over the waterfalls, everything that goes down was gone. Uh, trying to screw an ND1000 onto the camera. I ended up, I think, pulling the camera off, then screwing it on because I didn't want to drop it because sometimes those threads can just not line up right. Even as a mechanic, I'm used to doing the threads. It was sort of, you get a little bit stressed. Like, oh, please don't drop it, please don't drop it. Uh, so magnetic, I think, is the way to go. It makes it 
just going boop, 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 on, on, off, off, whatever you want to do, polarize it, take the polarizer off, ND, whatever. I think that's definitely a way forward. I think this is sort of getting there, but their filters they do run are fantastic, and I've used them. Now they don't have anything for the drone, so and when they were, when the Mini 3 came out, I had a few options. Uh, it was either free well, which um, I sort of looked at, but I didn't sort of go with. I'd had free well on the last Mini 2, and they worked fantastic. I had no dramas with free well. What I do have of theirs is the gradient filters, which is fantastic for blown out days or sunsets and sunrises to cut just to take that sort of blown out sky out of the equation and just give you a chance to sort of balance it up a little bit to get a full image out so if you're doing a lot of bright stuff uh, those gradient filters and I think 3 is the only one that does them I've been using them and I love them and they do a great job definitely recommend now I did decide to try out the Polar Pro filters this time. I haven't used them before, so I thought, well, new drone, try it out. So I've got a full set. I've got ND polarizers and a um, ND polarizers and a circular polarizer. I've also got their fog mist one, I think it is, and the blue morphic gold morphic, their FX filter pack, which is pretty darn handy. So I've got plenty of options for filters for the drone and. Having options is always good, and they do take the reflection out, and the gradient filters are fantastic. And the Polar Pro, the image coming out has been fantastic. That fog filter is actually much like the black mist filter I've got on here from Nissi, that softens that image up. And I think if you have a foggy morning or something, you're doing that, having that on to accentuate it would be fantastic. So definitely, definitely worth having a crack. Well, I'm just using the camera because the IBIS in the R6, especially with the new 24-105 is fantastic. I'll use that because that's, I don't have to worry about rain. I can put the road mic on the side and I can have the camera on here where it's a tree. If you haven't seen these before, they just fold up. You hold it like that. Hey, perfect, great. And then you just flick it out. Set the, set the camera down while you get your bag off and do your other stuff. So it is, once you get better at it, it is actually good and I'm not very good at it because I sort of went away. I did try a gimbal from DJI and it just didn't work. Um, it, to carry it set up was a bit of a pain. Speaking of DJI and Nissi, for the phone, Nissi had the old phone clip style, which I got and I've got all the filters for that. Just not using it because you have to clip it on and it only covers one lens. The filter itself is fantastic. The clip over a lens idea just doesn't work. Not good, unfortunately. So I just don't use it enough and I'll probably end up, I think I'm probably gonna sell that. Now, this has been fantastic and does a fantastic job, but I do have one niggle with it. Now this is the OM4 by DJI. And I use this with the phone and, it, and I use it and the phone works great. Magnetic. It's got the fill light built into this clamp. I bought the extra clamp. The fill light works out really well. Everything on it works fantastic. For its purpose, it does its job and I can't complain. The only complaint I have is the software. So once you take those images and you use the MIMO app, DJI MIMO app, and then you take it off the phone and then put it on to here to edit in Premiere Pro, it is a pig. And I'm talking some of the files will just go full blown out white and I've, and I've uploaded videos and thinking I've got it right and they're terrible so and, or I can't see the image software issues with the files are a bit of a nightmare so what I've found the solution is with this is upload these files put them into a folder and then go open them and then save them as a 4k video on my Mac uh, that fixes the images but unfortunately for whatever reason the, the footage that comes out it sort of seems like it ruins the footage on the video side and I've had heaps of dramas with it so I'm not sure whether to keep this or try the new OM6 but I think it's I don't think it's the it's not the gimbal the gimbal functions and everything work fantastic it's just the software and the video you come out so whether I just use this without the app and then I can just use the normal video application in the iPhone to use. I think I'm gonna try that a couple of times just to see how that goes. So, so as a gimbal goes, if you're just doing standard video, these things are fantastic. They do a great job. You can set it down, fold it up, shoot, 
do everything you need. It's got uh, the clone me feature in here is pretty cool. That is actually a cool feature for the photo. You can get three of yourself in the one shot. That's cool. Uh, it does have a lot of advantages, but the big, the only big drama I've had is, is that software. And it's light and portable. It is super light. You can take that off. You can shove it in your pocket and then bring it out and do your stuff. So I probably do keep this, but again, the only other thing and why I use this one a lot is when it rains. If it's raining, I've got weather resistance with the camera and the lens and that I don't have to worry about. This is okay, I think, for mild stuff. But yeah, I'd be careful. I wouldn't be able to, I probably wouldn't trust it in heavy rain or anything if you're using a lot or sitting it down or you're doing other stuff and taking photos. I do cover my camera and stuff with a, a shower cap, but uh, you can't really do that with that. So it's a little bit tricky in that regards. And I do have an extender for it, so it makes it taller. So last few items I want to talk about. I want to talk a little bit about the room. Laptop cover, moose case and my phone. But what I think they do the best of is for the laptop. This is waterproof, shockproof for your laptop. Uh, it is a little bit thick, uh, especially going in the Shimoto, it's a little bit tricky. But I know that this five, six thousand dollar laptop is gonna be safe when it's in this brilliant bit of design and tech. Great job, Moose, uh, love it. Definitely get one of those if you're traveling a lot with an expensive computer. Because I'm out hiking in the middle of back where nowhere, uh, I always carry one of these now. Uh, it's a personal transponder, so if something happens and I go all turns pear shaped, click this on, emergency services will come and basically save my life or get me back to safety. So, about 300 bucks, but Australian, but get, I'm sure they've got different ones in different countries. Do a bit of research, make sure you get a good one. That's a good brand GME. Hang it on your bag so you can get to it easily and it could save your life. If you're hiking, especially in Australia, with everything here can kill you, it's uh, definitely worthwhile having something like that in your back pocket. Now, road. We talked about road. Now, I think the biggest thing, the best thing I've had, the Video Micro 2 is fantastic and a great microphone, but the Wireless Go 2 system is sensational. Um, obviously, you've got two, with the Series 2, you've got one receiver and two transponders and they are brilliant. Love them, they've got the muffs with them, the quality of the sound comes out is fantastic. Early on I had dramas connecting to the mobile phone, but I got the actual proper cord from Rode from my Apple, and ever since then there was crystal clear sound, and you can't beat it. Now there are other options out there, this DJI does one, and they do a great job. Australian company though, love them. They've never let me down, so I, won't go past Now other than that, what else have we got? We, in the thing, we have a cupboard. I keep all my hard drives up here. I've got boxes with bits and pieces. My spare parts, stereos and stuff like that. Um, little Wallace, my boxes and all that I kept, I keep up the top. All my, all my filters and spare filters. The studio has come a long way and it's, it's getting a lot better each time. I do a little bit more when I'm home and I'm, I hope you're enjoying it. And I think, wait, I just gotta do something about that light. I think it might be a little bit blown out there, but see how we go. But anyway, that's what's in my studio for 2022, 2023, I guess, pretty much. I can't, unless I get the R, R body, which would be good, I can then use the R6 and then uh, shoot while I'm actually shooting. That makes sense. <laughs> there won't be too much changes in the future. The, RF was the big purchase this year, I had to save up for that. They're not a cheap uh, lens category, the L-series, but uh, they are a fantastic lens. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little snippet into the office and what's at home. Wine there for after a big day, that's always good. And yeah, just trinkets and memories from uh, my glory days as a baseballer. Really good. But uh, my youth and all the things I love and I'm passionate about, stuff from Jack and yeah, all the Mighty Cardinal stuff and uh, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed this. I will see you on the next video and uh, hope you enjoyed what's in my studio. Let's stick with studio. What's in my studio 22. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.